Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen. Today I'm going to tell you five secrets to frosting curves. Frosting curves seems intimidating at first, but once you learn these secrets, you may even find it easier to frost than a regular cake. Because when you think about it, it's actually a lot easier to smooth out something that's round than that has edges. This picture, I don't know why it reminds me of the scene from Ghost, you know, that romantic scene with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore where they're sculpting clay on a pottery wheel together. I wonder how that would have gone over if she was frosting a cake. I actually heard that their first take was actually her frosting a cake in the kitchen, a chocolate cake. And they were like, okay, you guys aren't even attractive enough to pull this off. Okay, that's a lie. They are attractive enough to pull it off. And that never happened, at least that I know of anyways. Here's a list of tools that I use to frost this cake. If you want to take a quick screenshot of this. Without further ado, let's get to secret number one. So we're going to be starting with an already carved cake. If you need help with this, I have a five secrets to carving cakes video. So secret number one is to make sure you have the right frosting. It's always important that you have good frosting for smoothing, but it's especially important with curved cake because the way I usually deal with difficult frosting is with my hot blade technique. But our tool that we're going to use to finish smoothing out this cake is actually plastic. And plastic won't stay hot long enough to do this. So we're going to really make sure that our frosting smooths well. The way to do this is just check your frosting in the bowl, smooth it out with your angled spatula, and make sure it's smoothing out well. You don't see a bunch of air bubbles. If you do see air bubbles, Try adding just the littlest bit of milk, just enough so you don't get those air bubbles anymore, but not too much that you change the taste of your frosting. Or if it's a crusting buttercream like this one, just know if that you add too much liquid, then it's not going to be crusting anymore. Here's a list of common problems with frosting that can make them difficult to smooth out if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. I want to address the last problem and that's if you mix your buttercream at too high of a speed. This creates air bubbles, making your buttercream impossible to smooth out. So really follow the directions well on your buttercream recipe. For example, on my crusting buttercream recipes like this one, for example, I never have you mix it higher than medium speed. Okay, you know what's bothering me from this scene from the movie Ghost? I've thrown on a pottery wheel before and the vase she was making was not easy. It was like this narrow three foot tall vase. I'd even go as far as to call it a vase. And he comes over and snuggles up to her and it starts to kind of get a little wonky. And then he touches the vase and the whole thing just falls in on itself. I'm sorry, but I could see that going a very different way than toward an intimate moment. Okay, tell me honestly in the comments below if your romantic partner did that to you. What would really happen? If my husband did that to me when I was making a cake... Uh-uh, no, no way. Don't touch my cake. So what you see me frosting here is actually just the crumb coat. As you probably know, the purpose of the crumb coat is to seal in the crumbs so you don't see them on your finished product. But as you also know, sometimes you can get away with skipping the crumb coat. With carved cakes, really try not to skip this step because it serves another important purpose. The crumb coat's gonna help show us where the cake peeks through the frosting. And a lot of times with curved cakes, this reveals where we were a little off with our shape. On this particular cake, for example, there was one part that the cake kept showing through and it made me realize that it wasn't completely smoothed out. So you can go ahead, even with the crumb coat on and that little bit of frosting on, and go in and carve that piece a little smoother. So secret number two is to use the crumb coat to reveal flaws in your carving. The other purpose this crumb coat serves is it's kind of a softer surface as opposed to a bare cake. So this really helps us when we're putting our final layer of frosting on to not get any of those pieces of cake peeking through. Because when you're scraping against a soft surface, the scraping isn't so harsh and this is really important with curved cakes because we're using a plastic flexible blade. The way we're gonna smooth out the frosting is by going over it a lot. So we don't wanna be 
scraping too much frosting off each time. So once you have your first thin crumb coat layer on, put your cake in the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes so the frosting can chill, which will make it harder since there's butter in it. And this will give it time to crust over if you're using a crusting buttercream. This is what makes it a separate layer so it's harder to scrape off because it's chilled. Is it pronounced Demi more or Demi more? I think it's Demi more. Help me out here, guys. Sometimes I'm so bad at this. I'm really good at remembering people's names, but if there's two close versions of it, I really struggle like Kara and Kara. So I make up these mnemonics like, oh, Kara cares and Kara likes cars. But then I forget, wait, does she care or like cars? So that doesn't help at all and then you let it go too long where you can't ask the pronunciation of their name. And then you just totally avoid using that person's name. You're like, hey, neighbor. All right, time for secret number three. So as you can see here, I'm using this little piece of flexible plastic, and this wonderful plastic is called acetate. It has many wonderful uses in the cake world. So I like to just buy a roll of it and you can cut it to size. I remember when I made my first Boston cream cake and I used acetate to wrap it around the cake like you see a lot of times and just a light bulb went off and I got all these ideas of all the cool ways you can use acetate to decorate cakes. So secret number three isn't just to use acetate, it's how to cut it. Now I tend to cut it pretty small because my hands are small, so it's easier for me to control the shape of it. It's easier for me to make sure that the entire edge of the blade is touching the cake at the same time, so I keep that nice, smooth look. So secret number three is to cut the acetate small in relation to your hand, so you can really control to have the nice curve that you want. If you don't have good control over it with your hand, it's just gonna cave in in places and you're not gonna get a smooth look. But it's not only to cut it small, it's also to cut it at an angle. One of the reasons I suggest cutting it at an angle is so you don't lose track of where your straight angle is. You wanna be using the factory curved cut as your blade. You don't wanna use the part that you cut by hand as your blade because it's probably not gonna be very straight. The other reason I suggest cutting at, at an angle is the smaller end is gonna be controlled by your thumb. So if that's a little narrower, it's gonna be easier to control that. But then you wanna keep the other end wide enough so you can spread your fingers, which is in fact secret number four. Having your fingers spread apart will also give you the control to change the shape as needed. Spreading your fingers across the acetate will really help you keep that nice curve that you want. And this picture I'm showing you here is actually a little bit long, but I wanted to really exaggerate it so you could see. Cutting it about half as short as this will actually give me the most control so the acetate won't buckle. Make sure you cut it from the bottom though so you keep that nice straight factory curve. Okay, I have a confession to make. I like to pretend I'm the cake Wolverine when I do this. I had some chocolate war paint for effect. I look like a total moron, but I feel tough on the inside. I really do. In fact, in reality, us bakers do have quite a bit of power. You want a piece of this? Huh? You want a piece of this cake? Yeah, you want it. Better listen up. It's quite passive aggressive, really. If you're liking this video, let me know by clicking the thumbs up button. And if you want to learn more cake decorating skills, how to decorate other fun sweets, learn recipes and all other fun types of baking stuff, start now by subscribing and click the bell so you receive notifications every time I post a new video. Speaking of that, this cake that I'm frosting in this video is actually going to be a Benny the Bigfoot Squishmallow Cake. So keep a lookout for that video if your kids are obsessed with squishmallows like mine is. If you don't know what a squishmallow is, it's basically a big, cute, fat, huggable stuffed animal that fly off the shelves. They are super cute and huggable. I totally get it. All right, secret number five coming up. This secret has helped me in frosting lots of cakes. It's one of those really simple ideas that we just don't think of doing because we're in a routine and a habit. So if you're having trouble smoothing out those little air bubbles, frost your cake in different directions. 
So if you've been frosting your cake from right to left, switch to left to right. Frost it up, frost it down, frost it at different diagonals. And then you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of this sooner? It totally disappears. It just needs a little frosting in a different direction. It reminds me of those sequin shirts where you push the sequins one way and you get one image and then you just push it another way and get another image. Just pushing the frosting in a different direction covers up the hole. This is very helpful when you have a shaped cake that has lots of little nooks and crannies because this is a way you can really smooth something out when you don't have a lot of room. So next time you're frosting even just a regular cake and there's just some air pockets that won't budge, just try frosting it the other way and it just disappears. It's cool, it's like magic. You don't have to shy away from the shaped cakes, the heart-shaped cakes, dogs, pumpkins, spheres, domes, you got this. I mean, it's so cool to have a structured cake for your birthday. If it ends up you do have a difficult frosting and you can't change it for whatever reason, check out my video description. I have a quick troubleshooting tips for you. Some cream cheese frosting recipes can be difficult as well because they're pretty dense. So I don't recommend cream cheese frosting if this is your first time uh, frosting a shaped cake. But if you need to do it again, just check out my troubleshooting tips down in the video description. Was Patrick Swayze a ghost yet in that pottery wheel scene? I actually have a ghost in my house that likes to help me bake. She likes to act all tough and scary and intimidating, but she's harmless. She just has some emotional walls up. You guys are gonna meet her in my Halloween video. She is appearing as my guest host for the first time ever. She's really looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you soon.